Hello, I'm Anne Kerr. Welcome to my art studio. When we think about line and wash, or pen and ink as it used to be called, we often conjure up a picture of a black pen and some watercolour paints. However, there are lots of other art materials that you can use to make your line and wash paintings. So in this video, I'm going to give you some ideas of what those other materials might be. So, are you ready? When you think about doing line and wash, you, you very often think about using a little pen like this with a metal tip, which has got black permanent ink in it. Now these come in different sizes and they go all the way from a number one up to a number eight. Now there isn't a lot of difference between the width of the line of those two pens, so I tend to use one that's in the middle, which is a number five. And I find that's absolutely fine for all the things that I want to do. Now there are lots of pens that look like this on the market. And it can be very confusing. But the one thing you need to look for on the barrel of the pen is that it says waterproof ink or permanent ink. Because if it doesn't, you're going to have an awful shock when you put on your watercolour washes. Because something like this could well happen if it's not permanent ink. This is a pen that's got water soluble ink in it. And this is what happens when you put the water on. And you can imagine doing a drawing with that and then putting your watercolour washes on. You will be so upset. So do always check that before you start any drawing with an ink pen. I should mention also that some of the pens come in sepia. You may not be able to pick that up on the camera, but that is actually brown ink. And that is also permanent, as those are. You can also get brushes with permanent ink and they literally have a little brush on the end. And this is waterproof ink, so when you put your watercolour washes over this, nothing will happen to it. They come in grey, there's a dark grey and there's a light grey. And I believe you can get them in other colours as well. So those are the brushes. Now I love to use a fountain pen when I'm doing ink drawing. Now this is a Lamy Safari pen. I'll put links to some of these in the description below the video. But I love to use a, um, a fountain pen because if I press lightly I get a very light line, but if I increase the pressure I get a much thicker line. So I'm getting this sort of effect without having to change my pen all the time. So this is, this is the pen I use mostly for my ink drawings. Now if you have a fountain pen and you undo it, the chances are when you buy your pen it'll have a little ink cartridge in here that has non-permanent ink. So it'll be ink that does that sort of thing. So what you need to do is take out the cartridge and buy one of these, which is called a converter. You can, uh, you can see my little converter is in the pen here. You have to get the right converter for the right pen. And then you fill up the converter with an ink that's specially made for fountain pens. Now this is a platinum carbon ink. So this ink doesn't block up the nib like some inks will. So if you want to use a fountain pen, you have to get a little converter for it. Not difficult. And then just screw it on and away you go. Now something else you can use to do your line and wash is an ordinary graphite pencil. Because when you put watercolour over graphite, nothing happens to it. The graphite isn't going to bleed. Think about when you do a line drawing underneath your watercolour paintings. Once you put that watercolour wash on, you can't erase the actual 
pencil. So you can use this for line and wash and I'll do an example for you later in the video. Something else you can use is a stick from the garden. Now this is free of charge and it comes in all sizes. <laughs> you just go and find a stick in the garden, sharpen it off with a craft knife and then you can use something like acrylic ink because acrylic as you know is waterproof or permanent when it's dried so use some acrylic ink and dip your stick into your acrylic ink and then you can draw with it and I will do an example for that um, I'll do an example with that let's start again I will do an example using this later in the video <laughs> You can also use a rigger brush and dip it into your acrylic ink and you can paint with that. And again, I will do an example for you later in the video. Now, if you're going to be doing line and wash, it's a really good idea not to use ordinary cartridge paper, but to use a paper that says mixed media. That means you can put water on it, you can put ink on it. On If you're going to be using a lot of water, then I suggest you use ordinary watercolour paper. This little picture was done with the 0.05 micro pen and then some watercolour washes dropped in uh, very casually, leaving some white spaces and not worrying too much about not going outside the lines. This little sketch of the tree was done with an HB graphite pencil. You can see that the tonal values are already there in the line drawing. So all I had to do was to drop in some transparent washes and it was done. This picture was done with a fountain pen and you notice it's got a very sketchy background with hardly any detail or colour because all the main colour and the details have been left for the focal point. This picture was done again with the 0.05 micro pen but this time I used acrylic paints and I watered them down until they had almost a transparent appearance just like watercolours. The line drawing for this one was done with a combination of graphite pencil and grey brush pen. Uh, the uh, colour wash was put on with watercolour pencils which in some places I made them wet and in other places I left them dry. Have you ever considered using acrylic inks for your wash? In this little sketch of the rooster, um, the drawing has been done in an HB graphite pencil and all the shading and the tonal values have been put in. And then I'm adding little washes of acrylic ink. Acrylic ink will go a long way. One little drop of ink watered down can make an enormous wash. I've had my bottles, uh, my bottles of ink for a long time and they never seem to run out. When you're doing little washes with ink, you will find that the colours are quite bright and quite vibrant. So if you love bright colours, then maybe that's the material that you should be using for your line and wash paintings.
After the little painting had dried, I went in with the Micron pen and went over all the outlines and the feathers and I think it's come out rather well. For this little sketch I'm going to be using some black acrylic ink, a stick from the garden and my little rigger brush. So here we go. Now I'm using watercolour paper, £140 watercolour paper, which has got uh, a knot surface and it's the, it's the texture of that watercolour paper that's giving me this lovely broken sort of line. If I did this on very smooth paper it wouldn't be quite so interesting. See that lovely broken line that's coming. Now my light's going to be coming this way so I'm going to be putting the dark side of the tree over here. Now during this little sketch I will speed it up slightly when I do the editing so that you're not sitting there watching me put hundreds and hundreds of lines on which can get a little bit monotonous. Just look at that lovely texture you can get on the tree there, just by using um, a watercolour paper that's got a reasonably textured surface and a little stick from the garden. Now I'll go over to my rigger brush and pick up some ink on that. I'll keep a tissue in my hand so that I can keep blotting off the ink that I don't actually need. And I'm going to use my brush horizontally to the paper, not using the point all the time but using the flat of the brush and I'm just going to stroke in where I want it to be darkest that's where I start and then I gradually work out to the areas that I want to be lighter as the ink begins to wear off my brush look at that <laughs> it's just I mean is there anything easier than that
Now you could put a little horizon line in here if you wanted to. Make sure there isn't very much ink on your brush. Now here, in the foreground, you can pick up some ink on your brush. You can see I've already got some here. That was done with the back of my hand. <laughs> but it doesn't matter. So we'll just go in with the, with the rigger brush and just add to that and put some little bits of texture and things in the front here. and some little dots and dashes. Dot, 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 dash, dash, dash. Which, by the way, is a technical term. <laughs> little dots and dashes here and there for a bit of texture. And there we go. Now allow that to dry completely and make sure it really is dry because there's nothing worse than going in and putting a watercolour wash over something that has a little bit, of, little bit of ink that's still wet and then you end up with a horrible mess. So I'm going to give that at least half an hour to dry and then I'm going to come back and put a watercolour wash on. The advantages of doing a line and wash painting is that when you do your initial drawing you put in all the lights and the darks, the tonal values and the shadows so that when you come to do your colour all you've got to do is to drop on a quick wash and you're done. I hope you'll give this a try. Experiment with your own art materials. Come up with some different combinations of things and see how you go. I think you will find that you love it. If you've enjoyed this video and it's been useful for you, then consider clicking that subscribe button and the little bell icon, because that lets you know when I upload another video. If you've enjoyed this one, then give it a thumbs up. 
Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time. Remember, there is an artist in everyone. Goodbye for now.